Welcome everyone to Afternoon at the Museum. Um, we have two really special folks. Well, everybody here is special today, but um, we have some announcements and then we have a special guest who joined us today. But very first of all, Afternoon at the Museum, we want to take a minute here and uh, provide a little time of silence because one of the great heroes of American sports and certainly of uh, civil rights and whatnot, and just an American icon has passed away today. We heard that uh, Hank Aaron has passed away, and uh, we will hear a little bit more about that in a moment, but we'll take a moment to honor Mr. Aaron. All righty. And now, um, gosh, he was he was such a big part of my childhood. I just remember watching mm -hmm. him play as a kid and it was just amazing. So, yeah. OK, now today at Afternoon at the Museum, I'm Janine Stanley. I am the director of customer communication here at IRA. And we have with me today Ryan Bishop, who is our product manager here at IRA and running our YouTube stream, et cetera. Hey, Ryan. And we also have our host of Afternoon at the Museum, Stephanie Watts. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Janine. Hi, Ryan. And our agent today is our rock star agent. Many of you got to hear him on our description of the Celebrating America show on Wednesday night. Hello, Christopher. How's everybody doing today? Hey, look at him. He's so modest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, folks, we had a great time on that show and the, the uh, preceding inaugural ceremonies. Our special guest with us today is the lady who suggested this particular museum, Ann Curry. Hello, Ann. Hello, everyone. How are you? Awesome. Now, you are an explorer yourself, and you live in Atlanta, and you have a bit of a, a connection to Hank Aaron and Andrew Young and, and family. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I do. I um, My mother is in a service organization, and I am too, actually, now, um, but she has lots of connections, and so I have met and and gotten to know a little bit um ambassador andrew young and his wife carolyn um and in fact they introduced me to the late maya angelou who was my oh wow uh, shira <laughs> oh <laughs> and, wow and you know my mother knows uh mrs billy aaron hank aaron's wife so oh. when we when i saw on the news this morning that he had passed my mom was the first person I called. Oh, yeah. I can um, imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Well, condolences go out to their family and, of course, the whole mm -hmm. city of Atlanta because he was just mm -hmm. such an icon for Atlanta mm -hmm. and for the country, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, well, we're going to take a look today at the museum, uh, the Center of Civil and Human Rights in Atlanta. And I'm going to step back and turn this over to Stephanie, Anne, and Christopher to take a look at this very unique museum experience. Well, thank you, Janine. And Anne, I encourage you to chime in. Um, it, since this was a recommendation of yours, uh, mm -hmm. please feel free to chime in um, at, at, at length if there's anything you also want to ask um, Christopher to describe or any suggestions that you might have as we get started. So what I would like to know, Christopher, is where are we in terms of the museum? We at the front door, is there a description of the building? Kind of just to set the scene for us, if you would. No problem. So this is the virtual tour, how they, um, how it is set up. The virtual tour, is a, it's a video. So any at any point during the video, I am able to pause the video and use the hand tool to grab and pan the camera in a 360 degree view to view anything that is around at the time. Now, during the tour, if you've uh, experienced the tour and I've uh, explored the tour already during the tour, they do have a guide already who speaks about the knowledge of the museum at length. And so at any point during the tour, like we said, feel free to chime in. And I will pause the video and explain 
what's going on and anything at length that we can see. And I can describe that because the, the, excuse me, the curator, I would have to say of the museum does a pretty good job with definitely all the information. So yes, anything else I can help you with. But okay. before we play the video, what we can see, excuse me, I'm sorry, go right ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, to cut you off, just real quick. So make it easier for myself and for Ann to, to um, um, interrupt if, if you will. Um, should we just jump in verbally and interrupt yes, or you want a, a hand signal like a timeout? Gotta... No, please just go <laughs> ahead and uh, just go ahead and interrupt. Okay. I, I don't think that's any okay. problem, just like a regular okay. museum tour. So um, how we start is that we have a front view of the museum and it's a front, more of a sky view. And what we can see is the beautiful architecture of it. It is the front door entrance area and we have curved sweeping sides of the building. Both sides are coming in and the colors on it, the very front face of the building is what almost looks to be a brass or a burnished orange. And the side of the building are interlocking a mosaic of rectangles, vertical rectangles of different colors. We have beige, gray, and that same almost burnished orange as well as lighter color oranges that wrap all around the side of the building. And I would imagine on the same, on the left side of the building, right now we're looking at the right side, on the left side of the building as well, that has that same pattern that interlocks on the roof of the building. We have what appears to be a garden. We have grass that covers the entire roof of the building. We can see a ladder that goes down into a center blocked area that creates a rectangular hole that dives down into the bottom of the building that I know will be featured later on in the tour. And I know the side mosaic areas and the, excuse me, the design itself of the building as we have a front, a front flat square as you can say, at the bottom, when it's, uh, excuse me, at the bottom, it splits down and slants. And we can see underneath there, we can see the actual entrance, the doors being held up by two white pillars. Mm -hmm. But the design of the building itself with the two sweeping, wrapping, curved walls actually has a beautiful story. And I will let the curator uh, speak on that later. We can see to the right and left of the actual building itself to the left-hand side, we have a very, very regal staircase that wraps around the left of the building and disappears. And we have very just beautiful green grass to the right and left sides with small gardened areas. And we can see a pathway that goes to the backs with tables and chairs. Okay. And that is where we start the tour. So I'm gonna go ahead and press play. And how long is the video? This video itself is only about 13, 14 minutes. Now, unfortunately, I have done a little bit of digging into the site and I was not able to find a longer tour itself. But at any point during, um, excuse me, during the tour, I have no problem with going diving a little bit more into the actual exhibits themselves. I'm able to, anything anyone has a question about, I'm more than able to bring up a picture of it in detail online, maybe bring up even a little bit more information of that exact exhibit and can give you a little bit more on that, so. And Anne, do you wanna make any comments before we press the play button? No, I'm, I'm excited to hear it. All right, no problem. Thank you, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And it looks like this video itself is recorded. The National October Center 21st. for Civil and Human Rights is a 42,000 square foot campus in the heart of downtown Atlanta, Georgia. The center is an educational and cultural institution that believes in civil and human rights for all. And now, the now, right out front of the museum itself, and I'll do this a couple of times as well by pausing, right out front of the museum itself, we have what appears to be a 30 foot structure, a uh, metal structure itself, a uh, rectangle, two platforms on either side of the rectangle stretch up into the sky and then connect at the center and in the middle of the rectangle, it would be clear except glass plates connect um, both sides together and create a window all the way up to the top. We have quotes that, um, excuse me, that flow down the side of the actual glass, quotes like thoughts, uh, commitment, citizens, community, we can change the world. And so the name Margaret M is at the bottom and it is a fountain where water flows down both sides of the glass from the very top. Very beautiful. Or of people to make this real. Our permanent exhibitions connect the history of the US civil rights movement 
to the ongoing efforts to protect human rights around the world today. Designed by renowned architect Phil Freeland, the building's curved exterior walls represent two hands coming together to protect something precious, human dignity. Its textured exterior shades of beige and brown represent the spectrum of people and cultures in our shared global community. Atlanta is the birthplace of the civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and home of the national headquarters of organizations that powered the civil rights movements in the 1950s and 60s, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. As the cradle of the movement, Atlanta is the most fitting home for a national institution that honors and celebrates defenders of civil and human rights in the past and those who fight for justice well, and equality we today. We also have glimpses of today's civil rights movements with Black Lives The first matters. floor of the center focuses on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., now the, whole the voice floor, to the voiceless gallery. The whole front, the first floor of the gallery itself, the walls are smooth. There are no edges. Everything is uh, rounded, so we have no straight edges. And I believe that might have something to do with the architecture of the museum itself on purpose to create a more sense of edges, create something that you can more or less be cut on. So if there are no edges, everything can just flow. And, and Chris, excuse Chris, me, Chris, if I can interrupt you for a quick minute. When, when we put the audio back on, is there a way to maybe bring the volume down just a tad? Of course. Because, because you, when you're sharing and it's wonderful, but you're, the audio is a little louder than you, so. No problem. Maybe I'm going to test something real quick. You, you go ahead and tell me. I'm going to test it. You go ahead and tell me what you think the audio right here. For justice and equality Is that a little bit today. better or a little bit quieter? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. Okay, yeah. Because as you're describing it and she's talking. Center focuses on. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. The whole first floor itself, as I said, smooth walls, but everything is white. Every wall is completely white. The staircase, as you first walk into the center, it opens up to the left-hand side. The stairs themselves are chocolate brown stairs. And the whole first floor, as we wrap around the building, as I spin the camera around to the left-hand wall, we have strips of metal on the wall in quotes. So what they are are actually writing, writings themselves of Dr. King in his handwriting of quotes, various some um, uh, things that he said in speeches, maybe sermons of that time, and it is etched in metal, and they've used lights to illuminate it from behind to where it glows at all times, and that is all over the left-hand wall when you first enter the museum itself, and it stretches about 25 feet from, from the door all the way to the first, excuse me, the first rounded staircases. And, and on the, the walls? Are the walls marble or are they any particular material? Or it does not look like it is a uh, marble. It looks like it is just a typical wall. It looks like it is just a white to the right hand side. When you first walk into the museum, we have um, wooden doors. I'm not certain where they lead to. We cannot see the words on them, but it also looks like past those doors, we have an amphitheater and words on the wall that says voice. I'm Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Voice to the voiceless is what it says in a big picture right at the staircase of what looks to be different pieces of metal put together. And on those different pieces of metal are uh, different pieces of the actual picture of a mural of Dr. King. And it, it is his, excuse me, it is his eyes and his face looking out to the left hand side to where he is not looking at anyone. He is just looking out almost in thought pensive. Jr., the voice to the voiceless gallery, displays Dr. King's personal artifacts, all from the Morehouse College Martin Luther King Jr. collection. So we have the a large scale around. art we'll installation, see. fragments, features Benches Dr. King's distinctive handwriting with words and phrases so from his sermons and speeches etched and in metal up and illuminated, and allowing visitors to experience King's ideals in his own words. So as the camera pans down. In the center's almost. main lobby, located on the building's second floor, visitors encounter a bold, colorful human rights mural. We see, we see actually the first 
uh, the picture of Dr. King itself is actually hanging. It is not on the wall. Those pieces of metal are actually strung from thin wires that stretch all the way to the ceiling. Mm. And those thin wires that connect all the pieces as they spin on some areas, when you look at it straight on, you can see his face perfectly. But then when you look at it from the side, you cannot see them. You see glimpses of his face in different areas. And then as you look up higher, towards the top of the ceiling, we have those pieces of metal creating a different photo of Dr. King, but only can be viewed in its full clarity from one certain angle of the museum. So looking at it from straight up and down from the bottom of the staircase, you cannot exactly see what the picture is depicting. You could only see that from the top of the staircase, which we have not arrived to just yet. Visitors encounter a bold, colorful human rights mural designed so on the wall, as she is about to speak of, we do have a, a mural with a yellow hand stretching up. And from this hand, almost as if uh, a sunlight is blazing out from each of the fingertips and from the wrist and arm, we have different pieces of different murals and different protests from different civil rights movements. We have pictures, you can see a young, uh, excuse me, pictures of a young man, one vote, on his sign, we see a picture of what looks to be a young, uh, very black man with the word justice on it. And above him is the American flag, but instead of stars, it looks like there are fighter jets replacing the stars. We see pictures of, excuse me, protests from Chile, pictures saying, I am a man, stop apartheid now. And words also what look to be in Hindu um, and Arabic. by Paula Scherer. The mural is a powerful collage of 20th century protest posters from social movements around the world. These images surge outward from a raised open hand representing unity. The individual posters create a singular artwork representing global solidarity and struggles to achieve human rights, justice, and dignity for all. The piece has become iconic, recognized as now, as we pan around the rest of the room before she changes rooms, facing out away from the mural is the glass facing the glass walls of the front doors and the side entrances. We see clear and we can see out into the gardens and a uh, good cityscape of Atlanta itself. And as you pan the camera around, seeing these side doors, on the part of the front entrance. Once you first walk into the doors, you can see if you turn around and look out, you can see a mural on the wall that looks to be um, phrases and also maybe manufacturers or providers and donators for this company, for this museum itself. I see the Coca-Cola company is one of the names I first see, but as you turn the camera to the left-hand side, to the right of the mural itself, I see other exhibits the center gift shop and what looks to be stretching off into the distance the staircase yes that leads back down to the first floor so this is the second floor as they mentioned and also another exhibit to the left hand side it flows down like water i believe is what it calls is what it's called very good and there's a central symbol go ahead no i'm sorry i was just saying in the end there is a gift shop that's always a plus <laughs> it is always a pleasure we have a staircase that stretches to the left-hand side of the mural and the sides of the staircase, they have uh, traditional metal railings, but those railings are um, faced with glass, creating just a lovely effect. The stairs themselves look like they are made of stone, but brush stone, very hardly brushed, very worn out looking, almost as if symbolic. I feel as if the way the rest of this museum is set up, everything is clean. The walls are white, so white and polished that the way those stair, the staircase are in the stone and just very rough look of them almost gives the feeling of it is there for a reason. So we might hear more about that later on. Of the National Center for Civil and Human Rights and its mission. rolls down like water. The American Civil Rights Movement exhibition transports visitors to the segregated the south of the Excuse 1950s, the of the where both black 
and white families enjoyed community events, pageants, and religious so gatherings. When you first walk Each into this room, it is a squared entrance with a 19, 1950s traditional kind of neon light words. It rolls down like water right above the entrance. And as you fir first walk in to the left-hand side, we see the looks of segregation. So the, to the left-hand side, it says white, and to the right-hand side, we have colored. And on those separating walls, on the right-hand side, we see images of the lives and the moments of colored people during, the, uh, during segregation. And on the left-hand side, we see those same the same time period, almost maybe even people living across the street from each other, but as in the lives of white people and what happened during that time, so. Where both black and white families enjoyed community events, pageants, and religious gatherings. Each group joined clubs and social organizations. And we do see each and side. Each served in the military. In doing every different instance, things, they were separated yet at by the a same strict time, system of. We see different faces on the right hand wall. We see pictures of. Excuse me, we see pictures of women all with uh, bands on their arms in protest of something standing on the steps. We see photos, images of families smiling and happy. We see a couple getting married, woman in her wedding dress, man in a black tuxedo smiling at the camera, a young boy holding the rings. Legal. As we pan the camera, we see a bus. And at the front of the bus, we see they have in the image two stern faced uh, white uh, individuals and behind them, far to the back of the bus, all, excuse me, all the black people. And you can see on the faces of some of them, just as they see the camera taking their picture, the faces of the white people don't even notice the camera, it seems at all, but all the black people are looking at the camera, almost in the sense of they know why the picture is being taken, but cannot say anything of it. And as the, as the curator mentioned, yes, on both sides, we see some of the same images. We see an image of a baseball team on the right side with all black players. And then on the left-hand side, we see images of a baseball team, yet with all white players. We see images of military members on the white side. As the same on the black side, we see members of the military. So people having fun, people doing the same exact things, dancing. We see ballerinas on the black side. And on the white side, we see that same exact picture of the bus, but it is flipped. So where if you put it together, they would almost be looking at the people in the picture would be looking at themselves. And across the wall, we see a wall of segregationists, photographs of people who supported segregation. We have uh, photos of all white men, looks to be about eight white men on the wall. But the point of the two separating walls is that the same activities are being done by both sides, just not together. Exactly. That's the sadness of segregation. Exactly. Um, as you mentioned, that um, both sides could be ha having the same thing. And the, the hilarity about it is um, on the white side, we have, um, excuse me, three individuals eating very large watermelons. So whereas that is obviously everyone knows that is a huge stereotype for black people. And yet we see no watermelons on the black side and where the stereotype came from is ridiculous, but it is not something that just, you know, black people enjoy. We see both sides eating cake. We see a wedding on the white hand side as well, excuse me, the right hand side as well mm -hmm. as the white side. So it's just, yeah. it is very sad. So we will go ahead and continue this tour. Segregation. The voices of some of the most powerful segregationists echo in the exhibit's first gallery, and a wall of laws show the thoroughness of segregation's reach in everyday life. Dis now we have two interesting um, exhibits right here next to the wall of segregationists. We have two poles stretching to the ceiling, and stacked on those poles are four very old TVs from the excuse around from the 1950s, 1960s, very big boxy TVs with very small screens. 
and they are all arranged to where they're stacked on top of each other going towards the ceiling, but all the screens are facing in different directions and all are flashing through uh, what appears to be images of propaganda, images of times of back then, mm -hmm. of segregation. Despite the oppressive nature of life under Jim Crow laws, Atlanta's African-American population managed to build vibrant communities. The city's Auburn Avenue district was a hub of black commerce, religion, and entertainment. Auburn and the beyond. institutions of the Atlanta University Center provided Africa. What looks to be a sky view of that uh, area of Auburn and the city's actual building specs. And in front of that screen of the actual Auburn area, we have what looks to be images with small stories of people that were important to that section and that time. It says, um, uh, you take party goers on Friday and Saturday is what the areas that I can see. And that is to the left-hand side. When you first walk through those walls to the, to the right-hand side, we see this Brown versus Board of Education, as well as Sweet Auburn. And to the left-hand side, we see the TVs, the segregationists, as well as the Jim Crow laws. African Americans, a distinguished higher education. The city of Atlanta became nationally recognized as a home for African American empowerment. <laughs> the Supreme Court's decision in Brown versus the Board of Education on May 17th, 1954, so ruled a... segregation in public schools unconstitutional. So this is an interesting uh, section of the museum. When you first walk past, we have the Jim Crow laws and the segregationists on the left-hand side. And as I said, the city of Auburn on the right. And then when you bring it together, we have a beautiful black arched entrance of, with the words Brown versus Board, Birth versus Board of Education in gray writing. On that, the pictures inside, I believe are a picture of a baseball player on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side, the picture of a dancer, uh, both colored. Uh, the dancer is wearing a black shirt and a red dress. The picture of the baseball player is in black and white, but ringing the arch, edging it from top to bottom and then across the entryway as if its own arch itself are words. Writing, I believe, of the actual Brown versus Board education from the dictation of the actual trial itself. All different sections, all different paragraphs breaking up and creating an effect of making, as I said, its own archway. So this is very visually rich. Um, very I mean, much so. The museum itself is uh, the way that it is set up is um, definitely trying to create a portal to the past, if you will. Mm -hmm. okay. With this monumental federal decision, advocates for racial equality challenge southern states and cities and so these are actually photos from highly Life organized magazine of civil disobedience and peaceful direct action. Paving the way first in court cases leading up to Brown versus Board of Education. Those two photos of the man on the right hand side, the black man on the right hand side and the black dancer on the left hand side were actually covers from Life magazine, it looks like, or um, excuse me, at least the newspaper network. Uh, from 1944, Miami hires Negro Police United Negro College Fund founded Dizzy Gillespie pioneers bebop jazz Smith versus all right Supreme Court rules against Democratic Party of Texas on Negro voting rights issue. And so in 1945, we had the first issue of Ebony magazine Todd Duncan first Negro member of New York City Opera. And so these are just kind of clips and instances of when things like this were happening. Mm -hmm. You know, times, uh, excuse me, the actual dates and times of when people were these pioneers, people paving the way. And as you walk through this archway, the first thing you can see as you look straight through a movement that catches fire, what looks to be a newspaper article. As we look through, we see the newspaper, excuse me, the New York Times and black faces glimpsing at us from these newspaper articles. We see the very, very famous image. The problem with, uh, excuse me, the problem we all live with. And the image itself um, is of a little black girl following behind a group of, we see two suited white men and behind her is also two suited white men as she is guided and escorted into school. Mm -hmm. One of the first black students that was allowed back into a white school when segregation was first being 
desegregated when things were first happening. And so that was such a monumental moment, but also so very sad that this little girl, Ruby, had to be escorted into school by armed civilians. So, excuse me, by armed policemen. So nothing would happen to her just so she could go to elementary school. Campaigns ushering in the civil rights movement. The movement also responded to heinous acts of violence against African Americans, such as the lynching Rosa of 14 year old Emmett Till. And they do and have the image tri- of Emmett Till, the little boy sitting uh, right here to the left hand side when you first walk in past that archway. And it is the photo of the young boy, very, very young, um, strong looking boy sitting next to his mother, smiling to the left of the camera. Emmett Till is looking straight at the camera. His mother seems to be looking to the, as I said, left of the camera as she smiles and almost seems to be talking to someone. Her arm is around her son's shoulder. He's wearing a white buttoned up shirt with a black tie on with a white stripe down the middle of it. His teeth are white, his hair is cut short and his eyes are bright. And what happened to him was very, very unjust and sad. Uh, that That is not to put it lightly. That is not what happened. What happened to him was an atrocity. But to have his photo here, it is a, you know, it is a lovely picture and I've never seen it before. So you see him in this picture, as you described, just being a young child with his mother as she's somewhere. They they look like they're on the couch in their living room. Maybe um, uh, just a nice little Sunday photo is kind of what it looks like. Just um, she's, you know, somebody came over to take a photo of them. And he's looking at the camera. As I said, she's looking off to the left Mm -hmm. of the camera. She's wearing a nice uh, purple dress with a very frilly, frilly collar and very, very frilly sleeves on. It looks to be uh, wine colored, as I said. And the collar and sleeves appear to be tan. She's wearing red lipstick. And they just both look happy. Yeah. And it's just very, very sad. Exactly. Very more so. And if you weren't aware, the woman that had accused him of it in the past, I believe it was the past five years, uh, came out and said that that didn't actually happen. So if you have, if you were not aware, so. Just real quick to interject, um, do we have much more of the video left? I've been trying to explain a little bit so we can keep going so we can stretch it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have about a month. Murder. Excuse me, we have another uh, nine minutes, eight or nine minutes left. Okay. So if you would like, I can just play the whole rest of the video and then we can speak more about it after. You know, I I think she's doing such a great job, as are you. And um, it's it's a toss-up since we have only so much time. So maybe we'll go ahead and uh, and get through the video. Yeah, and then we can hear some things from Anne and... You know, and if the only other thing I would add is if there's something that really is stand out that you think would help us to have context, please feel free to jump in. Very much love to, no problem. Movement diversified its tactics with organized boycotts of stores and segregated city bus systems. Individual students courageously integrated Southern schools often requiring the protection of U.S. Marshals. In cities such as Greensboro, North Carolina, and Nashville, Tennessee, college students staged non-violent sit-ins to protest segregation, asking to be served at whites-only lunch counters. Experts in non-violence trained demonstrators for what they could endure, preparing them by acting out scenes before sit-ins and creating plans in the case of arrest or harm. Visitors to the National Center for Civil and Human Rights have the unique opportunity to participate in a simulated sit-in experience at a lunch counter. In 1960 and 1961, hundreds of students known as Freedom Riders traveled throughout the South on interstate buses to test a Supreme Court decision declaring segregated facilities for interstate passengers illegal. Students of different races from all over the country participated in the rides subjecting themselves to assault, firebombing, and arrest. From Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to numerous unnamed men and women, activists of all ages were routinely beaten, harassed, and jailed for their participation in nonviolent protests and direct action. Some were killed. 
But these attempts to silence determined civil rights activists failed. From the mid-1950s to the early 1960s, the movement that started as a series of unconnected local efforts became a national coordinated campaign. On August 28, 1963, hundreds of thousands of demonstrators descended upon the nation's capital for the March on Washington for jobs and freedom and peacefully made demands. The historical event successfully pressured President John F. Kennedy and Congress to draft a comprehensive civil rights bill. In the gallery featuring the March on Washington, visitors experience the event's uplifting energy. They see footage of King delivering his famous I Have a Dream speech, hear the exciting sounds of protest chants and songs, and learn more about the key players who ensured the march's successful planning and execution. The success of the March on Washington and its demonstration of the movement's strength and support was met with violence. Just 18 days after the march, the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama was bombed, injuring 22 people, mostly children, and killing four girls between the ages of 11 and 14. Addie Mae Collins, Denise McNair, Carol Robertson, and Cynthia Wesley. The act of terrorism in Birmingham signaled the beginning of an era of pain and grief for the civil rights movement, as those who opposed equality responded to each of its successes with increased violence and racial terror. On April 3, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his final speech at Mason Temple in Memphis, Tennessee, where he was supporting a strike by sanitation workers. The next day, he was assassinated shot on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. Visitors experienced breaking news from CBS anchor Walter Cronkite and Robert Kennedy's announcement of King's death, just as people had on that day. Visitors ascend a staircase modeled on the Lorraine Motel to a landing with church pew seating, where they become participants of Dr. King's funeral. Archival footage shows the service at Ebenezer Baptist Church, as well as the procession to the public service on the Atlanta University Center campus. Rolls Down Like Water concludes with a tribute to Dr. King and all martyrs who lost their lives to make the United States a stronger nation. This Requiem Gallery recognizes these immense losses while celebrating accomplishments in the courts. Interactive tables allow visitors to learn more about the movement's victories and important figures, including former Atlanta Mayor Shirley Franklin and one of the center's founders, Evelyn Lowry. The walls of the gallery display state and federal laws passed to undo the system of segregation and serves as a reminder that much work remains. Spark of Conviction, the global human rights movement presents what happened around the world after, and in many ways, as a result of the U.S. civil rights movement. The gallery's entryway features a vibrant, collage of photographs of nonviolent social change movements around the world, including iconic images of anti-apartheid activists in South Africa, the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo in Argentina, People Power in the Philippines, and Tiananmen Square in China. Everyday people taking positive action in the fight for freedom and dignity. Opposite those collective movements, visitors face interactive mirrors where they're asked to pick a trait that defines an aspect of their lives. Upon selecting a trait, visitors meet a person who's been persecuted for the very trait they share. Inside the main gallery, visitors learn how human rights are defined and enforced, why they are important, and how they are violated or protected in the modern world. One side of the gallery introduces some of the most famous human rights champions in modern history, such as Eleanor Roosevelt, Nelson Mandela, and Mohandas Gandhi. In the middle of the gallery, life-sized portraits of advocates from around the world today stand together. These include Sister Consuelo Morales of Mexico and Nobel Prize winner Dr. Dennis Mukwege of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Opposite the heroes of human rights, a police lineup holds the most notorious human rights criminals in modern history. Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Idi Amin, and others 
all presided over mass murders on an epic scale, including genocide. None of these perpetrators were ever held to account for their crimes. An exhibition of justice provides profiles of current dictators around the world today, as well as legal efforts to bring human rights violators to justice. Updated annually, a color-coded world map shows countries where the rights of people are upheld and where they are not. The Ethical Footprint installation presents the human rights backstory of everyday objects like sneakers, flowers, and chocolate, and explains how people's rights can be abused in the production of these consumer goods, as well as how our consumer choices can help protect rights. The power of people to create change weaves through all of the center's exhibitions. These themes are celebrated in the Shared Accomplishments Gallery. This dynamic and inspirational final space houses an energetic film installation to convey a message of unity and hope that inspires visitors to do what they can in their own lives to promote and protect human rights. The shared journey towards freedom culminates with a final message from Dr. King. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And that is the end of the tour. So it sounds like there are five exhibition areas, more or less five or, or so. I mean, it's just amazingly rich with content. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I'm, uh, I think is important to mention about the museum is how they um, suggest, I guess, to put it in a way that makes it simple is just uh, they don't sugarcoat anything they have right next to all the good and all the triumphs uh, that civil rights movement has had. We have it right next to almost as if facing um, all the bad, you know, as I said, in the one room where they have a lot of the civil rights leaders, not just Martin Luther King Jr. They had pictures of Muhammad Gandhi, you know, they had pictures of Rosa Parks. And then on the other side of the wall, they had pictures uh, in a police lineup as if they were taking photos for their mug shots of Adolf Hitler, excuse me, Mussolini, Idi Amin. So pictures of the bad people as well. They had pictures of the people who have not, who are still doing these bad things. And so I think that was great to know. Well, we're going to have some additional people on that uh, bad guy's wall. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> I think Just a very saying. recent one, yes. Yeah, I think <laughs> There's a country that saw. probably wasn't in there that's going to be in there, sadly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> saying. You know, that's oh. where we are. Yeah. Anne, have you actually been to this museum in person? I have not. I had an opportunity to go um, a few years ago, and I was working, teaching, and, and so I was not able to go. Um, so mm -hmm. I hope once everything opens up and it's safe to be able to go. And, of course, Ira will be with me. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. And if I might come they, down there and be with you, Anne, this is oh, yet make, another one. Yes, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Are they open <laughs> at this point? Do we know? I'll take a look. One moment. Oh, awesome. Yeah, because, wow, this sounds like an incredible, I visually rich. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, yes. I think you nailed it. I yes. love the attention to the architecture, and I love the theme oh. of, you know, good and bad, separation, and all of that, how that's conveyed through as you move through. That's really, wow. <laughs> I would also like to peek in, Christopher, um, if we can peek just a moment into the gift shop to see what uh, might be available for purchase. Mm -hmm. um, Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. And see if, see if we can, going there right now. And it does look like, as, as we said, it, it does look like it is open. Oh, oh that's great. great. As of right yeah. now, um, especially in their website is featuring, one of the first things they're featuring is uh, masks. Mm -hmm. uh, face masks, okay. and they have a uh, featured collections. They have a mural face mask of the mural on the second oh, floor. Oh, how cool! Oh my gosh! From all the protests, we have a word girl face mask, uh, which looks like another uh, painting mural. We have a 
a woman on the face mask itself, a young black woman in her hair, just natural black hair, mm -hmm. uh, stressing off in all directions. And her hair is actually different words, equality, peace, love, faith, unity. But there's mm -hmm. also red words as well in there representing bad things. We have a couple masks saying, I am a man. Mm -hmm. um, and a mask saying youth is a love is love mask as mm -hmm. well as uh, accessories apparel it looks like so we have shirts with uh, one of the popular ones is this that mural from the second floor seems to be a very popular one reflect inspire transform the ladies word girl long sleeve and I guess that word girl must be a must have been a protest that I did not see in the virtual tour, mm -hmm. but it seems to be very, very popular. And I would like to just see real quick, maybe what that is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really evocative image, I think. And, and I just so. want, I want to say before we, <clears throat> before we end today segment that Christopher, you did an outstanding job. Absolutely. I agree. Preparation yeah. and everything just to make this so visually um, alive mm -hmm. for us. Uh, it, it was outstanding. So thank you. And I'm so glad that we got to see the photo of Emmett Till with his mom yes. just reminding mm -hmm. us that he was just a regular kid. He was, so, and it was a mom. Yes. And I think, mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned before, the woman that is accuser that, um, you know, his, mm -hmm. and I would like to just say it because I'm not afraid to, um, mm -hmm. because this is, um, you know, his, his murderer that, mm -hmm. that did that when she came and said it. Um, I, you know, I, I know her saying that I know people and I've dealt with people who have done bad things. And it's not just like in movies, in a movie, when you accuse somebody of doing something bad, oh, you got me. You mm -hmm. got me. If it wasn't for those mm -hmm. meddling kids, you know, yeah. but people don't do that in real life. People will admit to the end mm -hmm. that they didn't do anything wrong. And for her mm -hmm. to do that, right. I'm not saying that absolves her from anything, but the fact that, um, oh, no. it, you know, the fact that she did it, it's, it's something, I don't think it's nothing. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's a guilt that she's had to live with for and many, she, many years. And that she mm -hmm. will take with her, you know, that don't, yeah. that's, that's going to be her punishment. And I mm -hmm. hope on the other side, it gets sorted out, but it was a beautiful picture. I myself had never seen the picture before. Um, mm -hmm. He was a beautiful young man and um, his mom, I know uh, that was a, I'd read some of the articles of her afterwards and they were not yeah. easy to read, you know? So no, I'm yeah. sure they aren't. I mean, and when you, to think of the horrific things done mm -hmm. him and, and the to sad part, his this, mother. Oh. Yeah, the so I sad think. part about that story is that where the community that he was raised in, he could interact with people the way he did in the mm -hmm. store, whatever. It was not mm -hmm. unnatural, but in the South at that time, boy, it sure was not something mm -hmm. that was done. And, and that's so sad that in the same country, we could could have had and can still have in some places two different standards for well it shows us there's no interaction place, there's no place uh, in your heart and mind for racism yeah, mm -hmm. we're all human beings there should be i should yeah right. it's a it's a scary thing don't make place mm -hmm. for it don't make a place for it. <laughs> exactly because really. there's a choice mm -hmm. don't yeah. make yeah, absolutely and, and no, stereotyping. Uh, I thought about mm -hmm. the story about um, um, the watermelon. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. Years ago, I was uh, working and um, there was a, you know, my skin is very light. I am black, but I my skin is very light. And there was a, a I was working, had a white coworker and a black coworker. And the white coworker could tell the black coworker was black, but she obviously could not tell I was white mm. because we were talking about watermelon. And I was like, I, you know, I said something about, I don't really like watermelon. And the black coworker said, I don't either. And she said, <laughs> the white woman said, oh, you're supposed to like watermelon because you're oh. black. <laughs> and I just oh. looked at her. <laughs> and I said, I am black too. What are you talking about? And then 
she was like, oh, I didn't know that. And I said, and, and you know, we, she had met my dad and, and my dad is much darker than I am. So I said, you've seen my dad. What did you think? And she was like, I don't know Chinese. And we all just looked at oh, her like, what is wrong with you? Terrible. So I, it's still, okay. it's a lie. Yeah. 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 yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also mm -hmm. don't like watermelon. <laughs> For the record, we'll eat it if served. <laughs> I mean, I don't dislike it, but I don't reach for it if it's not served. Right, right. Isn't that interesting how, you know, we're all coming at this from these different points of view. And, and I was actually doing a giant face palm during that picture, just going, oh, man. Yeah, no. yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And, you know, um, I'm sure that there was a famous quote also about some other things like fried chicken and things like that from one of the yeah. golfers when Tiger Woods uh -huh. won his first uh, uh -huh. national championship, I think it was. Exactly. And it was so painful. It was like, oh, no, please exactly. don't oh, please mm -hmm. don't go there. You know, this guy is a young man who just did this amazing thing in sports. Leave it at the door, please. Leave it at the door. Oh. Leave it at the door. Oh. I think it's a uh, I think Miss Anne, I think it's a great choice to pick it um, was this museum as a tour. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, simply, simply for the fact that um it never stopped being um a thing, you know, civil rights. It never mm -hmm. it never went away. It never um yeah. it's uh I see it see it all the time grew up with it mm -hmm. and um knowing mm -hmm. that even more in this time i know as you mentioned uh stephanie mm -hmm. i know you mentioned that there will be somebody new on that, on wall, that wall criminals and mm -hmm. uh definitely definitely and it's uh it's sad that it comes because you think that yes uh, many of it came from our country our country was um my last name is thornton okay my last name okay. is uh, thornton and mm -hmm. the capitol building was designed by a man who had the last name Thornton, William Thornton, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. but the Capitol building was built by slaves. So mm -hmm. it is a strange thing to think that maybe one of my ancestors designed it and the other of my ancestor built it. So, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's sad to think that, but to see that even now today that I'm a civil rights, it, are we having another civil rights movement? Are we having another it's um, a continuation. Excuse me. Exactly. I it think is. we are. Yeah. I believe mm -hmm. that. Yes. Yeah. So, it's a continuation. Um, with the with the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, we're seeing it here in Atlanta, like especially this summer. They were marching past my building, and and they were I peaceful. I remember you talking mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. And they uh, were very peaceful. So you know, they were just marching and chanting, and so uh, you know. Um, and then, of course, you had the rioters. I was like, okay, now you all need to stop. That's exactly. where I have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Don't riot. Don't destroy yeah. things. That good, doesn't right? help anybody. No, that just raise not your the voice. Cost. That's fine. Yeah, right. but yes. please don't, mm -hmm. please don't raise yeah. anything else. You know, just mm -hmm. exactly. And that's the hard part. I mean, I think a lot of us understand the anger, the frustration, and all that, but. You know, mm -hmm. doing illegal mm -hmm. things. Channel really it. We have to channel cause. it. We, <laughs> yeah, we yeah, have to yeah. be the change we want to see. And I, and, you know, I certainly think I'm up with that quote. But I love, I love whoever did for coming up with it. We have to be the change we want to see. Mm -hmm. We, we yeah. want to make place and space for people who are not in our particular ethnicity or cultural group. Exactly. Um, please forgive the phone ringing in the background. I forgot. Yeah, oh, okay. out of here. <laughs> no worries. But, and um, I think, you know, a lot of this too is about the access to this information that we're providing here. And we want that for everybody equally. Mm -hmm. You know, Ira doesn't have any barriers, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're here to, to give that yeah. access to everybody no about barriers. whatever you need to know about. Like Janine, I, you mentioned that and I would like to, to, um, Kind of refresh a little bit, uh, if you don't mind refreshing us sure. on Afternoon at the Museum came about um, and Troy Otelio's um, vision and what happened and uh, why we are here today and what sure. we need to bring sure. content like this. 
I can absolutely tell you about that. And this series came about, and many of you, we appreciate all of the support that we're getting on Afternoon at the Museum. It came about because we wanted, as a company, to do more than just pay lip service to, oh, we support Black Lives Matter, we support equality. We wanted to bring a really rich experience like today and like the the number of museums that we visited to folks to continue learning and to enhance your ability to learn through access to information. And a lot of museums you can't just go visit right now. And mm -hmm. so um, I will be checking to see because I think we are going to reactivate, of course, our um, offer for the Association of African American Museums ended at the end of the year, but I think we're going to reactivate it for February. I think I'm going to make sure that we can do that for Black History Month um, and let you all have a chance to look over these museums, but also a number of others like this one. And I, I'm so glad we went on this journey today because so much, including the disability rights movement, have come from the struggles of the civil rights movement. Exactly. And now we've mm -hmm. got to tie this all together. And I think we started to see that on Wednesday. Things being tied together and include, and I don't know about you guys, but I still get choked up when I think about it, you know, yeah. and yeah, and how we were included, mm -hmm. you know, yes. and how yeah. it feels to be included. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody saw or um, heard that um, Biden uh, he gave a he gave a speech um, to he swore swearing in his staff. Right. Um, he had them all up on four very large TV screen, probably over 100 people on it on the screens themselves all put together. And it was his staff. He was swearing them in virtually. And um, uh, at the end of his speech, he said up front, you know, word for word, if I if I, you know, find out or if I hear if I see any of you talking down to anyone, any of you disrespecting or mistreating any of your colleagues, I will fire you on the spot. And wow. I think. I think that's yeah. great. I think that mm -hmm. is the whole. That's a good we will get back yeah. to civility. It, exactly. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I hear that in his tone mm -hmm. and his tenor. Mm -hmm. We will get back to civility, and civility doesn't mean we won't have disagreements. He says right. that we right. all know that. Mm -hmm. But you can be respectful in your disagreements. You can mm -hmm. speak. You can you can use your words. And if you can't right. find someone who can do it for you, we don't have to resort to violence. Exactly. Um, and exactly. we don't have to oppress people to get uh, our will influenced. Um, you know, that's just not what what we should be standing for as America. Right. That's not what And if you, as a person who is using our service, ever need our agents to verify something with a visual description, et cetera, or a kind of a read of a situation, please don't hesitate. Christopher, I'm sure you've had some experiences as an agent. And, you know, we may have an open forum on one of our afternoon at the museum uh, sessions so. during Black History Month about this, because as a blind person going into a situation, sometimes we don't know all of those things. The looks, the expressions, the turning yeah. away, the things that go on visually. Sometimes mm -hmm. I wish I didn't know, but um, please do not hesitate to call us because that's what we're here for. You well, be comfortable in your skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And be comfortable in your skin I've, as I've um, been in life's journey for a little while now um, and becoming comfortable in my skin and my hair and all of the other things that we talk about. Um, I think what I have taken from that is that people may not appreciate that about me or others when we're comfortable with who we are, but that's not my, gonna be my concern. I, yes, I need to know my environment. It helps me to know what's going on around me. But mm -hmm. I think the, the need to cower, hang back because, you know, I don't look like X or Y. Um, once you let go of that, you, you, you really are more comfortable in your skin. Um, and, and exhibits and tours like this one today in this particular museum, really, I think I see them as ways for um, all of us to 
acknowledge things that have happened, whether you are black or white or whatever your um, mm -hmm. ethnicity and culture, this gives you, these educational experiences give you a chance to acknowledge, you know, there's room for discussion about how and the why and the which, but at least acknowledging paves the way for healing. It does, and unity. You don't Absolutely. admit something's happened, how are you going, going to unify around it? Or, or get? Absolutely. Yeah, so... Awesome. Well, I would like to thank you so very much, Stephanie, our host of Afternoon at the Museum. Christopher, our amazing agent, thank you so much for this wonderful tour. And uh, we certainly hope that folks will come. And um, this is not one of the museums that is one of our access points yet. Yet, however, yes. <laughs> as I hold up my finger and say, wait, 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 if you would like them to be, um, please contact the museum and we'll be doing so as well about becoming an access partner so that you can physically go there while you're in mm -hmm. Atlanta. Um, I have some family that live in Atlanta and I know they have been to this museum because they were excited. They mentioned it to me, you mm -hmm. know, that they were glad to see we were doing it and thought we would have a, a really enriching experience coming there. And special thanks to Anne Curry for Thank coming you, and joining. I bet she didn't realize she was going to be a guest, but no, thank I you didn't. so <laughs> much for recommending this and being such a wonderful yes. addition to the show. Well, thank you. And thank you for doing it. I'm so excited that you all did it. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, thank you, Anne. It was awesome. a pleasure having you here, Anne. I, I just um, can't thank you enough for being willing to, to jump on with us today. Such. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank we will have a future panelist for another Black Lives Matter <laughs> Museum tour. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. It's the whole month of February. We got a lot of <laughs> We do. We've Hopefully got we'll hear some. from you again. Yeah, I'm going to pull up my magical Braille calendar here. Woohoo. <laughs> All right. So. Literacy is power. And Absolutely. we are going to start on the 5th. We don't have our exact museum set yet, but we will have okay. four consecutive Fridays of different Black history types of things and one of those may include a panel discussion instead of a museum visit so if you are an explorer out there and you have things to share about the black community about your experience over the years uh, please we will entertain you being part of our panel and you can contact us by at support at ira.io. Just let them know that you would like to be part of that. And they will forward that to me. And uh, Stephanie and I and our gang will deal with that. And we will uh, invite you to be on that panel. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'm Janine Stanley. And this has been Afternoon at the Museum, brought to you by IRA.